Hey everyone, uh, this is a section from Guy Debord by Anselm Yapa. Uh, it's from part two of the book. Uh, the parts are very large, uh, so I'm just going to read sections from the parts. That's what I've been doing for the other recordings as well. The last recording that I did was the situ- called, titled The Situationist in the 60s. The section that comes after that is titled May 1968 and After. Uh, this is the piece that I'll be reading uh, in this recording. So, let's go. May 1968 and after. The role in May 1968 of the Situationist International and of a kindred group, the Enrage of Nantir, is well known, and the Situationist account of what transpired is set forth in the above-mentioned book by René Vinay. And in the 12th issue of International Situationiste, here we shall merely recall the situation as international struggle against the influence on the student rebellion of various, quote, bureaucratic, end quote, groups from the Maoist to Daniel Cohn Bendit's Mouvement du 22 Mars, or Mar, I don't know if I'm saying that right, and likewise against the influence of the big trade unions on the workers. The situation is strove to generalize the occupations movement and called for the, from the outset for the formation of workers' councils, but at the same time the situation is cautioned continually against an excessively triumphant attitude. Their influence is particularly evident in the poetic graffiti that covered the walls of Paris. Despite the often very traditional tones of their rhetoric, the situationists were nonetheless thoroughly aware of that the significance of the moment lay not in the tr- throwing up of a few barricades, but rather in the fact that this was truly, quote, the beginning of an era, end quote. Footnote, indeed, some of their concerns are very, a very far cry from those of the students. They were keen, for example, to relate their actions to history as when they proposed to exhume the remains of Bichelieu, that, quote, that foul statesman and cardinal, end quote, from the chapel of the Sorbonne, and pack them off to the Elysee, or the Vatican, and footnote. As noted earlier, the place of the situation is in history is largely bound up with the way in which the events of May 1968 confirmed their theses. In the thick of these events, they sent a telegram to the Institute of Social History in Amsterdam that began, quote, we are conscious of the fact that we are at the beginning to produce our own history, end quote. Later on, they were in- continually referred to that, quote, jolly, Jolie moi de mai, end quote. Footnote. Clearly referring to his role in May 1968, De Boer ended up, quote, admitting to being the one who chose the time and direction of the attack, end quote. And reflecting that, quote, no one has twice roused Paris to revolt, end quote. End footnote. There are some observers, however, for whom the situation in role in 1968 was strictly fortuitous. Thus, Mario Perniola would write several years later that, quote, the key to understanding their relationship with May 1968 is an arbitrary three-tiered identification of situationist subjectivity, the revolutionary project of instituting workers' councils and the proletarian psyche, the fact that, they're, they're, <laughs> that here are three quite distinct things whose coming together, whose coming together was not dialectical as the situationist international mistakenly believes, but merely contingent, but merely contingent, end quote. Perniola is only partly correct. The situation is international, never claimed to have foreseen the date of the explosion, merely the explosion's content. Merely the explosion's content. May 1968 was indeed proof that something very much like revolution could occur in modern societies and in a form very closely resembling the situation is international's prediction. In a book published in 1967, Henri Lefebvre concluded a few remarks on the situationist by observing that the situation is, quote, proposed not a concrete utopia but an abstract utopia. They do do they really imagine that one fine day or some decisive evening people will look at each other and say, quote, enough, we are fed up with, with working and being bored, let's put an end to this, end quote, and that they will th- thereupon proceed into endless festival and start creating situations? Maybe it happened once at dawn on 18th of March, 1871, but that particular set of circumstances can never recur, end quote. 
1967, the Situations International quoted this remark without comment in their journal. In 1969, they quoted it once more with considerable and quite understandable satisfaction. It is recognized today that 1968 was one of the crucial turning points of the century, but the simplifying label of, quote, student revolt, end quote, has served to distort the real picture. It has to be remembered that 1968 witnessed the first and until now the only general wildcat strikes in history, with over 10 million workers drowning tools and a large portion of them occupying their workplaces. Over the preceding months, there had in fact been several wildcats in France and some had been occurring, accompanying accompanied by outbursts of, quote, permanent festival, end quote. In other words, the striking occupation, the striking workers of May and June 1968 were not simply uh, aping the students' occupation of the Sorbonne. Nor did any economic crisis underlie the revolt, as the Situations International correctly pointed out, and quite clearly specific demands for university reform or for higher wages were not the most fundamental motor in a situation that was completely unexpected and that bordered on civil war. For several weeks, though, every agency of authority abdicated its role of feeling a feeling of, quote, everything is possible, end quote, prevailed. The upside-down world set back on its feet. In short, a historical event occurred, but it wasn't one that affected individuals in their most intimate and everyday being. One, too, that showed beyond doubt that a very large number of people yearned inwardly for a completely different life and that this desire, once it found expression, could quickly bring a modern state to its knees, exactly what the Situations International had always said. Even though modern, even though another may... 1968 has not yet occurred. The fact remains that the conditions which occasioned the first, occasioned to the first, have not disappeared. And should the day come when people's desire to control their own lives drives them once again to the streets, not a few of the situation's international precepts will surely be recalled. In the immediate wake of this moment of glory, the situation's international gained considerably in strength. The succession of new members was admitted, and national sections were once more set up. French, Italian, Scandinavian, and Americans, such of which succeeded in publishing an issue of their own Situationist International Journal. See the, Ameri footnote, see the American Situationist Journal of June 1969, for instance, reprinted Portland, Oregon, Extreme Press, 1993, and footnote. The Italian, sections further distinguished itself, the Italian section further distinguished itself thanks to a series of well-aimed interventions in connection with the Piazza Fontana bombing and other Italian events of the time. I think the Piazza... Uh, Fontana bombing was a fascist bombing that was kind of tried to be uh, present itself as like a left wing like attack, like a sort of like a frame up of left wing attack or something like that. Maybe frame up's a little too uh, specific, uh, uh, but it was part of the so called like strategy of tension, which I'm not sure of the actual contents of the strategy of tension nor of Italian history, but that's um, that seems super that's a uh, super important. Okay. Footnote. The contents of the sole issue of the journal Internationale Situationista, uh, July 1969, and the other writings of the Italian section are at present available only in French translation. Écrite complète, 1969 and 1972, de la section italienne de l'Internationale Situationiste. On the 12th of December 1969, a bomb exploded in a bank on the Piazza Fontana in Milan, killing 16 people. Quote, left-wing extremists, end quote, were widely blamed at the time, although a long and torturous judicial inquiry would eventually confirm the much earlier conclusion of the Italian situation as is set forth in their pamphlet, The Reichstag is Burning, namely that the bombing was a provoca provocation plotted by the secret police with help from right-wing extremists in response to the rising revolutionary tide in the country. There were to be more, more such, quote, state massacres, in, end quote, in Italy over the next few years, among them the train, quote, Italicus, end quote, the Piazza della Logia incident in Brescia, etc., end footnote. The Situationist International's theses enjoyed vast renown at this time in all kinds of places. One journalist went so far as to dub De Boer's Society of the Spectacle, quote, the capital, as in Marx's capital, of the new generation, end quote. It's from a newspaper in 1971. The truth was, however, that the Situationist International was entering a terminal crisis, seemingly due to the shortcomings of a good many of the newcomers, a series of explosions and splits, lift, left only De Boer and two others in the organization, and in the spring of 1972, the Situationist International was disbanded. Footnote. The less than scintillating final years of the Situationist International are evoked in Note pour suivre à la histoire et la Internationale Situationiste. Uh, day 1969-1971. Uh, 
Uh, a number of internal situations, international documents dating from this period may be found in De Montier, Le Situationiste, et May 68. And footnote. De Boer and the Italian situationist Gianfranco Sangonetti offer an explanation of these developments in the veritable spirit in the international. They observe that the period is on the road to a real revolution, that the situationist ideas are clearly present on a wide scale in many different struggles. From this, they conclude that the role of the situationist international as an organization is complete, but their attempt to see the demise of the situationist international in terms of the supersession of a separate avant-garde, for which a revolutionary period does not have the same need as a period when the revolution is still far off, is not very convincing. They themselves admit that the situation this international has entered a crisis which they blame on the great numbers of people, chiefly students and intellectuals, who contemplate and endorse the radical attitudes of the situationists without being capable of giving this endorsement the least practical expression. Their depiction of these, quote, pro situs, end quote, and, and of the social stratum of lower and middle echelon management to which they belong is brilliant and withering, but the author's overestimation of the phenomenon is likewise, in a more general way, their conflation of the, quote, modern revolutionary project, end quote, with the situation as international. Nonetheless, bespeaks a certain and not entirely new megalomania, a certain loss of contact with reality, De Boer and Sang. Guinetti, note that the independent petty bourgeoisie has faded away with the rise of the managers, technicians, and bureaucrats who are the main creators and consumers of the spectacle. Such lower and middle ranks of management nevertheless remain objectively, if not subjectively, close to the proletariat. The real failure of the situationist international lay in the fact that its theory never spread significantly beyond the much disparaged milieu of the students and intellectuals. A good many worker struggles were underway around 19, 1870, and occasionally a few snatches of situationist theory found their way into them. But no proletariat exists that, as a class, stood opposed to the totality of the society of the spectacle. De Born Sanguinetti cite, quote, people of color, homosexuals, and women and children who take it into their hands to want everything that was forbidden them, that was forbidden them, end quote, as contributors to a spreading general insubordination. But it was not by chance that prior to 1968, the situation was international, and never mentioned any of these groups. The campaigns waged by such segments of society are often very energetic and sometimes lead to the overthrow of, a, of certain representations, to genuine action in the first person, and to the taking into account of people's own everyday life both as the means and the end of struggle, yet reference is barely ever made to these movements, by these movements to society as a whole, and they are made up of people who define themselves solely in terms of one aspect of their existence. Formally, at any rate, the situationists existed in the theory that only the proletariat, by virtue of the proletariat's position in the production process and of its historical tradition, had the capacity to bring down the system. Paradoxically, their broadening of the concept of the proletariat so as to cover everyone who was dispossessed in one way or another accurately prefigures the future revolts of various, quote, minorities, end quote. All real struggles, whether of blacks in Los Angeles, students in Paris, or workers in Poland, were characterized by the situationist international as, quote, struggles against alienation, end quote, little heed being paid to the very different circumstances, the very different demands in play in each particular case. This is not to contest the legitimacy of seeking the essence of such struggles at a level deeper than that of their explicit demands. The fact is, though, that the situation International's attempt to circumscribe their quote in itself end quote generally remained far too abstract in character. The last of the situationists poured scorn on the supposedly vague and abstract appeals. Where am I? Sorry. The last of the situationists poured scorn on the supposed vague and abstract appeals addressed by Raoul Venegem, now dishonorably expelled to quote insurrectionaries of the will to live, end quote, that they too were hard-pressed to name the revolutionary object. Indeed, de Boer himself seemed to be placing his hopes in the auto auto automatisms of capitalist development, as when de Boer and Sanguinetti argue that the contradiction between economy and life has reached a qualitative threshold, while the opposition aroused by the economy must in turn bring the, about a turn of the economic crisis in the traditional sense of the term, all of which allegedly made the times more revolutionary than ever. The most interesting aspect of the veritable split in the international is the attention the veritable split in the international pays to an issue then in its infancy with a great future ahead of it. The issue of pollution and ecological catastrophe, including the effects of the use of nuclear energy. It was clear to De Boer and Sanguinetti that capitalism had entered a phase of, quote, galloping irrationalization, end quote, in this regard. 
industrial production was modeled on the agrarian system, striving to reap the absolute maximum possible in every re season, as though it too were permanently threatened by penury. Concomitantly, it took on pseudo-cyclical aspect. A programmed obsolescence became essential to the maintenance of output. The reality of industrial production, however, was not cyclical but cumulative, and this reality, quote, returns in the form of pollution, end quote. In thought of capital, science was just as useless as all the remedies proposed by the governments. For the authors of the veritable split, the looming ecological disaster was proof positive that the economy and the commodity were contaminating the whole of life and threatened the very survival of the species. They observed, too, that, quote, capitalism has at last furnished the proof that it cannot develop the productive forces any further, end quote. And this, not the quantitative sense, as Marxist scholasticism had long predicted, but rather in the qualitative sense, in the qualitative sense. Even such fundamental necessities as water and air were now part of the struggle, rather like bread in the 19th century. The old slogan, quote, revolution or death, end quote, had thus taken on a completely new significance. Today, with the benefit of 25 years of hindsight, we know that these circumstances have not generated any movement of radical opposition to a society where the gulf reached between technical and economic means has reached insane proportions. True, the environmental movement that does exist is vast, but, is, but it is utterly without any global perspective. Okay, that has been the end of the section titled May 1968 and afterwards uh, in the section, uh, in the part of uh, Enzel Myapa's Guy Debord titled The Practice of Theory. The next section in this part is titled The Debord Myth. Thanks for listening.